Wow, here we go. Introduction, slides. Let's do this thing. So welcome to Net Squared North Texas. You might, might not be from North Texas, but that is totally fine. So my name's Eli and I'm the Net Squared Community Manager, which means basically I'm the champion and support person for people like Jenna, who's sort of making things happen here with the group. This Net Squared group is actually part of a global network of, of Tech for Good chapters hosted by TechSoup. And if you haven't run into TechSoup yet, I'm gonna blow your mind. It's basically a nonprofit like yourself that helps other nonprofits get, implement, and use technology effectively. So when I said there's a global network, I was totally not lying. There are about 100 plus chapters it's spread across 41 countries, all doing similar things to what you're seeing here, which is bringing local case studies and best practices around how to use technology to people in the nonprofit sector. When we can get back together in person, we'll do these educational events and we'll also go out for a drink afterwards and complain about our boss. They're super fun, these groups. So every community has rules. Here, our rules come in, I think, what is that? Three, five different rules. Number one, we welcome everyone. Seems simple. Number two, we put community first, so we're here to support each other, although a little bit of showing off, of course, is welcome. Three, we are here to build stronger nonprofits. So technology is gonna be the lens or the way we look at some of the work, but ultimately we're not a tech meetup. We're really here about how, about helping nonprofits like accomplish their mission and do more good. Number four, we invite participation. So as I say, you should get yourself into that chat, ask some questions, you know, share some gossip. But before you put anything into that chat box, ask yourself, am I bringing my best, kindest, most empathetic self? Because the rule number five is we treat each other with kindness and respect. So just take a moment, think through, have I phrased this the right way? And if you have, type away. And if not, try again. You know, there's no urgency. Um, and as I say, we invite participation. So we're coming up with the, all these groups. Actually, I'm not coming up with these great event ideas. That's all been Jenna. More than one a month. It's been hardcore, but I bet Jenna could use a little bit of help. So if you've got a great event idea, maybe you want to do some note taking for these events. Put your hand up in that chat. Let us know and we'll follow up because we would love to put you to work so you can help contribute to this group as we grow. Remember that TechSoup thing? It's all about make sure that you have access as nonprofits to the tools you need to succeed. That could be software, that could be hardware, that could be services. And what we do at TechSoup is we partnered with about 120 of the largest technology companies, the Zooms, the Microsofts, the Dells, the Adobe's, the Linksys's, name a large company, TechSoup is probably already has, has a relationship with them. And what we do is uh, we basically help them scale up their in-kind donation and discount programs. Um, so basically we're, we're, we created the dream, which is like, what if you as a nonprofit wrote one grant application and then you could use that exact same grant application for the next company or organization you went to or the next foundation or the next foundation. So basically we're reducing a whole bunch of paperwork because what you do is you create your free TechSoup account and we prove that you're a valid nonprofit. And once we've done that, then you get instant approval through any of the other partners. So we're gonna save everyone a whole bunch of grief. And through that, at this point, we've served a million nonprofits and saved the sector about $14 billion in license fees. Now that's a big number. Practically, this is what it looked like to you. So I said, let me imagine a 10 person nonprofit. And this is the kind of a typical bundle of software they might need. They'll need some security, they'll need an operating system, they're gonna need hosted email. And as you can see, the savings are kind of ridiculous. Um, you know, it's totally worth your time. Um, and as I say, that TechSoup account is free. So this group is furiously planning events. It's amazing. Here's a taste of just two more. So uh, you should tell your friends about this. You know, drag your colleagues in there because they need to know about accessibility. Bring your email marketing team in and put them to shame by saying like, look, don't do the same thing over and over again. 
we're going to show you a couple innovative new things to try as we come into the new year because it's always about testing 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 but uh you know jenna will tell you more about what's coming up later and with that i'm going to get out of the way because uh the real show is about to start which is not me is actually brian so we're really pleased to have brian present today um, he's with the Square team and we'll presenting on Google Analytics and at the end we'll run through the two upcoming trainings that we have scheduled and would love to hear people's ideas in the chat if there's other topics that you're interested in learning about and we'll get those on the schedule too. So Brian, take it away. Thanks, Jenna. <clears throat> um, as she said, I'm Brian Daniels. I'm a project manager with Square. I'm going on five years there, um, but I've been in the web space for I don't know, 13, 14 years, something like that. And uh, then uh, I wouldn't say I'm a power user of Google Analytics, but I've been messing with it ever since then. So I've seen some of the progression that Eli was talking about earlier with that user interface just constantly changing. So we'll take a look at what that looks like now. So I've got some slides here. I'm gonna turn on my screen share and I'm gonna be looking over here at my giant monitor. So I'm just gonna go ahead and turn my camera off real quick. Okay. Can everyone see all right? Good. Oh, there we go. One second here. Okay. So if anyone is not familiar with website analytics, um, website analytics can help uh, provide data to give us insight into our users' behaviors. And the end goal is how can we make their user experience even better to make them um, convert into um, a customer or take some actionable item that we think is important on our website. So some of the questions that this data um, may answer are how do people find my site? This could be, are they coming from a search engine? Did I have um, a link from another website? Did it come from social media? Did somebody just type in my, um, my website address? And who are these people? So Google Analytics, uh, well, let's just back up for a second. Google, as you all may know, knows an insane amount of information about all of us and probably more than all of us know. So one of the cool and scary reports in um, Google Analytics is demographics. So we can even see the, uh, the gender and age groups of the people visiting our site which again helps us determine who is our target audience. Should we be speaking to somebody in a di different demographic age group? Are they staying engaged? Are they clicking around to multiple pages? Are they filling out our forms? Are they browsing our store? Are they watching any of our videos? These are all things that help keep the, the user on your website and keep them interacting with your organization can also tell you what are your most popular pages. So you have a breakdown and um, you could filter by let's say page views and uh, figure out what your most popular pages are and then look for trends between them. Maybe they're blog posts about a specific topic, you know, analytics for example, maybe everyone's reading your analytics articles and those are the top performing pages. Well, why not write some more analytic articles? If that's what people are engaging with on your website, let's give them what they want. And are people actually doing what I want them to do? As we touched on earlier, are they filling out our forms? Are they buying products? Are they doing the stuff that we care about most? So there's a ton of different web analytics tools out there. Um, a lot of them do the same thing as far as reporting traffic and stuff like that. Some of these have some additional um, features, you know, like, um, like website heat maps is kind of cool. You can see where people are um, dragging their mouse around. 
But the problem with all these is they all cost money and um, some of them can get fairly expensive and are usually for um, more enterprise type organizations. So in comes Google Analytics offering their services for free in order to collect more information on us. So what do you get? If this is free, why would I want to use it over another analytics tool? Well, some of the stuff it can do is tell you how many people visit your website for a certain period of time, how many different pages they viewed. On average, what is the number of pages that um, all the users across a period of time have viewed? How long they stayed on the site or a given page? Demographic information like age and gender. Device information. Are people looking at my website on a tablet, a mobile device, a website browser? This can help us uh, determine whether or not we need to focus on one of these devices. If everybody's coming to your website on a tablet, then let's make sure that your website performs well on a tablet, and looks good, and everybody has a great user experience on a tablet. Traffic sources we touched on before, are they coming from a social network or referral from another site? Uh, Google Analytics search. It also has some site speed metrics. So if you don't know, Google is considering page speed in their, analytic, or in their search rankings. So pages that are very slow uh, to load are ranked lower than ones that are really fast. So this can help us identify which pages to um, try to speed up so we can get them up towards the top of the search results. Again, we can figure out what content um, is important to the users. Google Analytics can also pull in information from Google Ads. So if you're running any ads with Googles, that information can be tied together with the rest of your analytics. So is my ad driving people to my contact form or whatever our key performance indicators are, um, are our ads driving the actions we want them to take? How impactful is your social media? Are a lot of people coming to your website from social media? Are there things that you can do better to drive traffic from social media? And Google Analytics allows you to set up um, custom goals to track probably just about anything you can think of. Um, form fills is an easy example, buying stuff from the store, again, easy example, but this could also be are people scrolling down and reading my whole page? Are they staying on the page for a certain amount of time? Um, if they're watching a video, did they click around and only watch parts of it or did they sit there and watch the whole video? These can all be set up as goals. And then they have a robust e-commerce report. So if any of you have an online store, um, selling things I'd say more than just you know online donations, this would be a good report for you to track how your um, products are performing. It has information on your revenue across a period of time and uh, even a breakdown for revenue for specific products and, um, and what their quantity purchased is and all that good stuff. So, all right, let's take a look. Okay. So this is the Google Analytics dashboard. And uh, Eli, you, you've looked at this before in the past. Not much has changed as far as reporting. A lot of the same reports are still here. There's just more of them and they're in different places. So here on the dashboard, we have um, several things that are important to most people. So um, you know, what is our information about the people visiting our site? Is there anyone on there right now? We have real-time reports. Are they um, close to getting to our, our conversion goal? Where are they coming from? That's some more demographic information. When are they coming? Um, what pages are important, top devices? This kind of has a summary of all the important reports. And you could click into any of these to see more details. 
going to jump down to the audience report. This is the very the most common report that people use. It's uh, pretty simple. How many people have come to my site? How many users have come to my site? Um, how many of them are new versus returning? Did they uh, view multiple pages? How long were they on the site? By default, there is a date range that goes to uh, the past week. And it does not count the current day. So it's the previous week up to the end of the previous day. You can change these to whatever date range you want. So let's say you wanted to search um, year to date up to yesterday and just punch in the numbers here. There's also some presets here. So if you just wanna see the last 30 days, you can select that there. And then you have this option to compare. So um, again, you have control over these ranges here. By default, it just looks at the last 30 days again, because I selected last 30 days um, in the first place. But let's say we wanted to look year over year. I could come all the way back here and select my February dates to see um, the performance differences um, between 2020 and 2021. just show you what one of these graphs look like. So our blue line is our current metrics. We got a huge spike here, so it looks a little funny. The orange line here is um, the, the uh, date range that we're comparing data to. And so once we have this compare feature turned on, we can see actual numbers too. Um, what are the differences between this time period versus the last time period? Do we have growth or decline. So as I mentioned, these date ranges, it likes to default to um, the previous day. You can set the current day in there, but there's a little bit of a lag to get information into uh, the reports for this uh, particular day. Now they do have a real-time reporting feature. So this gives you some information in real time just not everything that we would um, see for previous days in the system. So here we can see, um, you know, there's two people on the site right now. How long ago were they on the site? I and mean, what are they looking at? So we've got somebody looking at the home page here. We've got something, someone looking at the contact page. Hopefully they're gonna be filling that out soon. And then the, there's where the people are coming from here. And you can drill into these um, locations even further if you wanted to. So if we had users from other countries, we would actually see a world map here. And for example, you could click on the United States, drill into the United States like we have here, and you could uh, drill into the uh, states and cities. Aside from information about our audience itself, here we have the demographics report. And of course, I picked a report that doesn't have that much information. So what we would see here is a breakdown um, for different age ranges. Um, and those are set uh, by Google by default. And they're the, uh, the common ranges you would expect, you know, like um, 18 through 25, 25 through 40, et cetera. So we would see a breakdown here. And then as well as male and female. Here we have a little bit more information in this behavior section. Are these new or returning visitors? Returning visitors are always nice to see. That means they're engaging with your website. There's something that they like there, so they keep going back. New visitors are also nice to know because they're new leads, right? Maybe these people returning to the website have already converted into a customer. And it's nice that they're back, but we really want new customers. So we have information that we can drill into here. Who are these new visitors? What pages are they looking at? Um, and we can mix and match these with any of the other metrics that are available. For example, what devices are these new users coming from? We also have some information on the 
browsers that they're using. So this again can help us um, learn what types of browsers do we need to pay attention to. So for example, we've got good old Internet Explorer down here. There are some people coming to our site from Internet Explorer. Well, maybe we should check out Internet Explorer and make sure everything looks good there. Cross device tracking is, is somewhat new. Um, so take the scenario, you are, um, you are viewing my website on your desktop computer. And let's just assume that you're logged into the website. Maybe um, you have a membership or, or whatever the case is. So I'm logged into the website on my desktop computer. Well, later this evening, I decide to go to, um, go home and pull up the site on my phone, we can tie that information together. Um, in general, the, um, the World Wide Web would see those as two totally different people because they're coming from different sources. With the cross device um, configuration, you can tie that together. And so you know this returning visitor um, is the same person regardless of whether they visited from their desktop computer or a different device. The acquisition group, how are people coming to your website? So this is where we would find information um, about what channels they're coming from. Are they coming directly um, to the website by typing it in? Are they coming from search engines? What sites are referring my site? So what other sites have links back to my site? So you can see here, we have several clicks from civicrm.org. Google ads, we touched on before. If you have ads up and running, you have a report here. Google Search Console. This is a totally separate Google product. Again, it's free. The Search Console is specific to Google Search Metrics. So inside that tool, we can see stuff like what keywords are people entering uh, when they find my site? How many impressions do they get um, in the search results when they type in these keywords? Um, are there any crawl issues? Like can the Google bots access all the pages that I want them to access? So you can set up everything in a search console and then you can pull all that information here into um, Google Analytics. And then you can see not only what um, search terms they're putting in to find you, but also what pages they're landing on. You know, coming from Google search, it's highly likely that they're not going to come to your homepage first. Maybe they're going to a blog article or something like that that's relevant to the keywords that they're entering. You can set up campaigns. Uh, the benefit of campaigns is to keep track of information across different um, activities. So let's say that we have a fundraising campaign and we're promoting it on social media. We're um, promoting it on our, our homepage. We have a form that we want people to fill out. We can tie all that information together. So by that, I've had somebody complete my form as part of this campaign that I've set up. Did they, did they get here from social media or some other form? And this is a little different than the traffic in general. This is tying that information back to the conversion. So somebody completed the form. What did they do before that? Behavior will give us the information like site content. What are some of the most popular pages on our site? Um, by default, it's gonna list um, from the, the page views down. And you can show more ro rows. This will go down all the way until um, there's no more pages indexed by Google. You can also search for specific pages here too. So there's this filter box. Like I see, I see we have one blog down here in my top 10, but how are some of my other blogs performing? So I'm just gonna type in blog. 
And now I see uh, the top performing blog pages, or in other words, pages that have blog in the URL. Here we can see a linear graph based on the time period we've selected up here. And you can hover over to see some more specific information. We can export this report. You have options to uh, create a PDF or Excel or Google Sheets. We can share this report, um, which essentially sends an email to somebody. So maybe there's a, you know, an ED that wants a copy of this report. We can use this tool to just send them a PDF version. These can also be automated. So any report that we see in Google Analytics, um, you could set up email notifications and you could send them to as many people as you want and you can even set the frequency. So let's say that the ED wants to see some, some type of information, some report every week. And then we can select, um, is that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, very similar to recurring events in Google Calendar. Secondary dimensions um, can add an extra layer of data to these reports. So we click in here, there's um, some options that are available. We can use the search up here if we wanted to. Um, so, We'll just take a really quick example. So I have all these links here, but I have no idea what pages these links are talking about. We can add a secondary dimension for the page title. So now I can see the titles along with my links. here. And there may be some other um, pertinent information that you want to see here, like where are they coming from to get to these links? Um, did they come from advertising? How much time did they spend? And then you can drill into these by clicking on the links if you want to see, um, for example, the graph or send a report just specific to a certain page. And then we have our site speed reports. This will give us a breakdown of um, the uh, site overall. And then if we need to, we can drill into other pages here. Site search will give you information on searches within your website. So let's say you have a search box on your website, you have a lot of blogs or whatever the case is, somebody enters in a keyword in your own search box, that information comes into this report. So very similar to Google search, right? We'll know um, what people were typing in to your own search box and what they were finding after that. I'm going to jump down to conversions. So conversions should be the end goal. Again, a conversion is typically um, filling out a form or purchasing something. Something is going to potentially bring in revenue for us. But really, um, a conversion could be any type of goal or key performance indicator that we defined. So I touched on this earlier. Maybe we don't care if they fill out a form or maybe there's some other stuff that's important to us. Um, like, did they watch my whole video? Um, that can be set up as a goal and we could see the number of seconds that somebody actually watched the video and did they get through 100% complete? Or maybe we wanna set some other threshold. Did somebody watch at least 80% of my video? If so, then let's count that as a goal. That person is now um, converted because they've achieved my goal of watching at least 80% of my video. Some other um, goal examples could be um, clicking on a specific link or counting how many links on your site were clicked in general. Um, how, many, how far down somebody scrolled on your page. How long they spent on a page. Um, Again, pretty much anything you can think about could be set up as a goal. So Google Analytics has these new e-commerce reports and I have um, some screenshots here that we can pull up. So once you plug in the e-commerce tracking, 
Um, there is some information that gets into the website and without getting too complicated, it puts some information in there about our products and orders um, that people are checking out. So we have somebody that adds a bunch of products to our cart. They go through the checkout process. They complete the checkout process. So our goal is the order is complete. This tracking code can take a look at all the products that were in that completed order and then provide information such as revenue, um, how many were purchased for a particular product, et cetera. So over here on the right, this is um, confidential information. So I've grayed out the um, products here, but here's a list of our top performing products. And if we were to click on um, these, we can drill down into a list of just products. So <clears throat> for example, this top performing product brought in over $5,000 in this time period. And then we can see the previous time period, um, it did not perform quite as well. So something happened within the last month that really drove up our revenue on this product. I'm gonna take a, a quick look at some of these administrative settings. So Google Analytics is divided up into three pieces, I guess you could say. So you have your account um, and then each account can have different properties. So properties could be maybe different websites. They could be um, an app versus a website. So generally properties are um, different things you wanna track within your account. And then you have views, which is a um, specific data set related to that property. And you can create as many of these as you want. So for example, one view may be, show me all the information, unfiltered, I just wanna see everything. All traffic view, let's just call it that. Then maybe I want another one that's excluding all my staff uh, or anyone that um, visited the website from my office. We could set up a separate filtered view and then we could switch between those reports if we wanted to. Let's see how um, all traffic performed and let's see how it performed um, excluding any of my staff. Once you've set up your property and view, pretty much all the other action items are gonna take place in this view section. So here we can add um, users to view this specific information. And then we can also set up our goals here. So here we've set up our, our contact form goal. And this is a very simple goal. We are, are basing it off of a destination and the destination is our thank you page. So every time somebody hits that thank you page URL, it gets counted as um, a completed goal for us. So you can see there's some other options here for a goal. You know, as we touched on earlier, did they spend a certain amount of time on a page? Did they visit a certain, you know, number of pages? And then events would be things like counting how many video plays, links that were clicked, um, and uh, things like that. So Google Analytics collects all of our information. It gives us some wonderful graphs and stuff out of the box. There's some other tools that we typically use um, along with Google Analytics. Google, let me just jump back over to my slides here. Uh, Google Tag Manager is a tool that allows you to put, um, let's just say tracking information into your website without the need of a developer. So this is great for marketing teams. So maybe they have some Facebook tracking um, code that they wanna put on the website. Well, they can go to this tag manager uh, tool and then pop in that, that um, Facebook tracking code and then they're, they're done once they publish it. They don't have to reach out to a third party or a developer and say, hey, can you just put this tracking script in there? they can self-serve themselves. So we can also set up um, some of these tracking things through Tag Manager. So a great example of that 
is getting that information for the e-commerce reports. Typically what we do is we set up um, the goals and information that we want to collect within Tag Manager. And then Tag Manager will send that information over to Google Analytics. And we touched on Google Search Console earlier. That's a separate tool that can also feed into Google Analytics. So then we get all that information within uh, Google but let's say that it's still not as pretty as we want, or we want even more information. There is yet another Google product that is absolutely wonderful, Google Data Studio. So Google Data Studio is just a reporting tool that allows you to pull in data from various sources. So I'm gonna pull up one real quick. Bear with me here. So as we saw before in Google Analytics, we have that wonderful line graph that has some pinpoints on it, but maybe that line graph doesn't really make sense to somebody else in my company. My, my executive director doesn't understand that line graph. Maybe I want it to look somewhat different. So here in Data Studio, we have um, a lot more options for types of graphs and types of information that we want to show in a specific report. Wait for this to finish loading here. So here I've set up this one page sample report. We can add as many pages um, to this report as we want. We can add as many um, data points as we want to it as well. And then like inside the Google Analytics tool, we can automatically send this information um, via email to whoever, they, whoever we want and they'll get a PDF version of, of the report. And then they can also click a link to get to a shareable version. So they don't even have to have an account here. We can share the report with them um, via an open link. And then they can do things like drill down. So we have um, our event scroll and we wanna know um, how far somebody scrolled down the page. So out of all the people that um, actually did scroll, we had over 3,000 people that got all the way to the bottom of the page. So I mentioned um, pulling in information from Google Analytics. Um, we also have um, information we can pull in from Google Search Console, Google AdWords. Um, let's just pull up the data connections here. So just about any Google product is available to add to these types of reports. We can get YouTube analytics. Um, there's also contributing um, connections here as well. So these uh, third party um, sources can include things like Facebook ads or um, any other type of non Google information that we'd wanna pull into the report. So uh, the Data Studio reports are great for sharing uh, specific information to a person in a very particular way um, and not relying on the default Google Analytics reports. So I know we're getting close on time and I wanna make sure that we leave um, some time for questions. So we'll go through this last part fairly quick. So to get started, you have to have a Google account. And if any of you have ever signed up for anything Google related, you probably already have one. This goes for even a Gmail um, address. You already got a Google account if you got a Gmail. If not, go sign up for one. We'll put the links in our um, follow-up after this session. And then once you have a Google account, you can uh, simply log into these other tools 
And then just follow the steps to create your Google Analytics account, create your tag manager account, set up your um, search console. And then, then you'll need to add that tracking script to your site. So this would be the one piece that you may need some help with. Um, there are some open source modules. If you use something like WordPress or Drupal, there's some modules that can be installed that add this tracking script for you. So if you have those modules, you again, don't need to reach out to a developer to add that, that script. Now, if you're in a um, system that doesn't have any of these modules available out of the box, then you may need to have a developer add that script to all of your page templates. And the script that we would add is the Google Tag Manager script because we're gonna send everything from Tag Manager into Google Analytics. So the Google Tag Manager script is what would be installed on your website. Then you just have to sit back and wait for the data to roll in. There's no um, retroactive data. So as soon as you set up your tracking script, at that point is when it's gonna start tracking. So if you need help, there's um, several resources you can check out. There is a Google Analytics Academy, which is 100% free. And uh, it has different levels um, of users that can take it. And, and there's also a tag manager course and a data studio course. And then you can always search on Google to answer any of your questions. The uh, Google um, knowledge base has a ton of information on these products. And then of course you can always contact us. So we'll have a uh, recording of this meeting. We have several blogs on our website that you should read and check out. Um, if you need to reach out to us, you can contact us through our, our website form or reach out to us on social media. So I know we've had a few questions here in chat. Um, Jenna, I know you've been keeping an eye on them. Yeah, the most recent one, if you want to look directly above Adrian's most recent comment and speak to that, just about standards. Okay, um, so Google, um, Google Analytics anonymizes everything. So it's GDPR compliant. And for those of you that don't know what GDPR is, it's um, something that was implemented on in, in the European side or on the other side of the world that um, protects users from um, getting any of their private information out in the open. So per GDPR, if somebody were to request, um, let me turn this back on. If somebody were to request their information to be removed, the, it's up to the, the website administrator to scrub all their information and get rid of any personal data. So Google Analytics already does not store any personal data, therefore it is GDPR um, compliant. Now, as far as ethical goes, I think, um, I think the real question there is how ethical do you think <laughs> Google is already? We already know that they're collecting a lot of information um, that we probably don't want them to know. Does that answer your question? Well, let's see. I saw in chat that there was a couple use cases uh, or um, Cheryl looks like Google Data Studio that you're already using that. If anybody wants to jump in and explain how they're using some of these tools to give context, knowing that everybody is kind of on a, a different spectrum, right? Of what of this may already be incorporated into how you work. And so if anyone wants to give additional context, whether in chat or take yourself off mute. Yeah, I think that's great. Well, sure, since you called me out, I'll go ahead and chime in real quick. Um, <laughs> So as I think it was Brian, as you mentioned, um, you know, your executive director or CEO may not make sense of all of the data that's actually in Google Analytics. And so I am a CEO at the company <laughs> and this is what my marketing team provides me, just this high level information, um, which is really helpful. And it's essentially like our, our scorecard. Um, and so only the information that I need to be able to make decisions about the company or the, the tools that I'm going to say yes to or approve payments on or, or something like that, um, as well as, you know, any campaigns that we've got going on. 
Yeah, I mean, so it could go either way. I'd say it's just whatever your preference is. If the Google Analytics reports that they're sending you now work fine, then I think that's good. The main benefit of um, the Data Studio reports is you just have so much more control over the layout and types of graphs that you have. And then you also have that um, other data sources. So, you know, Facebook ads is one that comes up a lot that wouldn't be inside of your regular Google Analytics reports. Yeah, I was saying they only give me Data Studio. They keep me away from oh, Google Analytics. <laughs> <laughs> well, as you saw, there are so many things and there are so many different kinds of reports. We didn't even click through all of them. It's a little overwhelming. So it's probably best for you <laughs> to, to just stick to that report if it's got all the information you need in it already. I would say, um, if you have the time or are up for it, it wouldn't hurt to just log into Google Analytics, click around and see what reporting options there are. And then you could go back to the marketing team and say something like, hey, I saw this, can we get this into my data studio report? So just a suggestion there for you. So I just shared in chat Brian's email. So if anybody has follow-up questions or you're playing with this later this week, next week, and thinking back to anything that was covered today for what's possible, feel free to reach out. Um, as we mentioned in chat too, this is being recorded and live streamed on Facebook. And so we'll add that uh, link to the recording as well as some of the resources and how to's that Brian was using to even put this together to then share that as a follow-up with other colleagues or organizations you work with who weren't able to attend today. Um, any other questions before we take a look at what we have up ahead? Questions or comments about- I see Apple one TV. earlier from Eli. Yeah. So Eli, you asked about cross-domain tracking. That is an option in Google Analytics. So the example um, that you used is you have your main website, nonprofit.org, but your donation form is at a totally different URL. Um, we want to make sure that that information is aggregated into our one Google Analytics report instead of having separate ones for separate websites. So I will put a link in our, um, our blog post where all this information will be that tells you how to set that up. It's, uh, it's really just a matter of adding some additional information to your tracking scripts. So this article I'll put in there should be able to walk you through it. And then again, this is where Tag Manager is really handy. Um, you could set up that script um, in Google Tag Manager, and then you could even play with it. Maybe there's some um, variations that you want to try. And you can handle all that yourself without a developer. Another question just came in, if you want to read that, Brian. Um, so the question is uh, about Google Pixel. Can you drop a Google Pixel on a landing page to follow up with people with digital ads, Facebook ads, et cetera? Um, the answer is yes. You can put whatever information you want really within these tags. So, you know, uh, Google Pixel, they'll give you a, a little script or piece of code. You would pop that into a tag in Google Tag Manager. And then there's what they call firing rules. So we could choose, do we want this to, uh, pixel to fire on all pages of our website? Or maybe we only care about um, specific pages. Or maybe you have different pixels for different pages. You know, Like maybe one product has a pixel that's different from another product. So you have real granular control over um, where these things appear. Um, what actions make them appear, like maybe it's clicking a link and not just loading a page, and then what information is in there itself. It's a good question. Uh, I see one here about how do you determine a key performance indicator and I'd say <clears throat> there is no silver bullet answer for that. Um, you just have to get with your organization and figure out what is most important to you. And it's not always buying something. In the couple minutes we have, I just shared a link in chat to the upcoming events. So you can 
view that and also share my screen. We have two scheduled and we're working on the training schedule for the next quarter. So the next one we have, we like Wednesdays. We like Wednesdays at noon. So in a couple of weeks, we'll have, you'll hear from Brian again, and he'll be talking about 10 common accessibility issues. And that is CMS independent. So it doesn't matter what um, kind of, whether you're using WordPress, Drupal, Joomla, it doesn't matter. Um, a lot of this is universal for things that you can take home with you to evaluate your system. And then also at the end of March, the nonprofit email marketing, seven things to know. You have to chip, pick a number, right? <laughs> Five, seven, three, what are we gonna look at? We're gonna look at seven. <laughs> so how are you doing with email? Are they, are they being opened? What could you do um, to have them open more often and your um, impact? just that much greater. So hope you can join us. And as always, um, all of those trainings are recorded. We'll share resources after the fact. And so you can have that as a kind of a resource library to refer back to or, or share with others who you think would benefit and be of interest. And as always, uh, feel free to reach out. And if you know of topics, can think of topics that you would like to learn more about, this is a great venue to do it. You don't have to pay. And <laughs> we get great um, trainers from all over who can present on all kinds of topics. So stay in touch and, and spread the word for upcoming trainings. Thanks everyone for joining today. You'll get a follow-up email soon by the end of this week with um, this recording and resources we discussed. It's nice seeing you all. Thanks guys. I'll talk to you great again job. in a couple of weeks. Thanks. Thank you. Bye.